There's another feature that landed recently in Firefox, and I want to show it to you. I have some lists here, an ordered list and several unordered lists. And we're going to start by working with the unordered list because the bullet points are a little bit simpler. So it used to be that if we wanted to replace those bullet points uh, with some generated content, we would do that bef on the before pseudo element. First, we would want to remove the bullet point, and we can do that by setting the list style to none. Um, so do that here. You can see that the bullets disappear. And then on the before, we would say content, uh, and in this case, we're going to use a cat emoji. Um, and you can see that works well enough, but we're messing with the semantics of the list. We're having to remove what the browser is doing by default. Uh, and replace it with something new. So rather than doing that, what we can do now is use this marker pseudo element, uh, which works similar to before. I'll show you a few differences. But we add the content to the marker pseudo element, and you can see that with just that one line, uh, we've replaced the bullets in our list. Now there's some interesting things about the marker element that's created. The styling on the marker element is fairly limited. Uh, we'll not be able to see that with the cat. Let's just have an arrow like that. We'll do a couple of them so we can see what we're doing. The marker pseudo element is limited a little bit currently in the styling, and that's intended to change. Um, but for now, we can use things like color. So we can say the color of the marker is red. We can also change the font here. So we'll add a font family of cursive, uh, and you can see that changed the font family. We can also say that the font weight should be bold, font size 2Ms. Uh, we're going to do very large markers there. There's a fair amount that we can do with the typography of our marker. Uh, what we can't do is style the box, uh, so we can't add a background here. Uh, that's not going to show up. We can't add padding. That won't do anything. So we're a little bit limited in what we're able to apply to it. The other interesting thing to look at here is how this relates to the before property. So if we add before content, let's just say before, um, you can see that the marker comes before the before content. Uh, also, if we were to add a background to each list item, a background of silver, uh, you can see that the marker by default is outside of the box and that the before element by default is inside of the box. Now the before element can't be moved outside, but the marker can be moved inside. And that's using a property that we've had for some time. Uh, list style position allows us to say that a marker should be moved inside of that box. Um, so that's still possible. You can see that now I've selected the markers on the ordered list. Uh, and I have the color changed to red there. There's some more things that I can do with counters here. So one of those uh, is that I can change the content of the marker to be a different version of the counter. So I can say counter list item, and list item is uh, the default counter that's built into the browser and will automatically be counting for you on any list. So I can show that and I can change it to Let's go Upper Roman. That's great, but I have these nested lists and I want to take that a little farther even. I want to say, let's get the counters, the list item counters of both the top level list and the nested lists and join them together. And we do that by using the plural function there, the counters plural, uh, and then we're still gonna be using that list item. But here in between, we have to add the string that will separate them. Um, and I'm actually going to let that go back to decimal. It's a little easier to see. Uh, and we have this separator string 
that's going to go between our numbers and we can change what that is. So we have one and then 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 uh, and then 2, 2.1, 2.2. That allows us to do nested lists. We also don't have to only use this on list items. I mean, you'll see if I changed this and I was gonna say, let's do the markers on the H2s. There is no marker currently on the H2, even with, let's make it that cat again. For example, even when I put that content in place, the marker pseudo element doesn't appear. And that's because the marker is only created on list items or anything with a display of list item. So we can apply it to the H2 if we add display list item, and then those cats will appear. And we can add some padding left just to give us some space. So I can add markers to any other element. And this is actually something that we were able to do before, um, but now we're able to also style the markers uh, once we add them. Let me get rid of that. And instead let's add a counter that we can create ourselves. And I'm gonna do that with uh, counter reset. And I'll create a new counter called heading two. And this just says, uh, I want to start counting something called heading two. And that's an arbitrary name, I came up with it. We can also give it a starting number, by default it's gonna be zero. And then on my H2 marker, I can say that the content should be the counter called heading two. Uh, like I said, the default is zero, and at this point, it's just showing us zero on every H2, and that's not exactly what we want. So we're also gonna say every H2 uh, does a counter increment of heading two. Uh, and now you can see that each second level heading adds one to the counter, displays that counter on the marker, uh, and then also styles it the way we've said to. We can also say how we want our counter to start, what number we want it to start at. By default, it starts at zero. We can also start it at say 10, and then our numbers will count from there. Uh, you can do that on a list as well. You can set how the, where the counter should start. We can even say negative one, which I find useful sometimes if I want uh, counting to start with a zero on the first item. There's a lot more we can do now with creating counters, uh, incrementing them, applying them to various types of elements, doing nested counters, and then also styling the markers, at least the typography of the markers. And while it's not supported in every browser, when it fails, we don't lose a lot. We still get some bullet point styling. You can use at supports if you need to do something that's not gonna fall back gracefully and have fun.